We're going to go ahead and begin our meetings together this evening. And as we do, I wanted to come together and uh, remind us of a good request as we come into the presence of the Lord. I found this in Psalm 94, verse 1. O oh Lord God, show thyself. And I thought that was very, very good to request the Lord to do this as we come together with brethren of like precious faith who are seeking the Lord with us. It's one who, a person who is convinced of who the Lord is and what he has to show will be the only person that can make such a request. The one who's tasted enough to know that the Lord is good, but there is more good to be had, can make this. It's also the one that knows that the Lord is forward to give that makes such a request. In the very early days, Moses knew this to be true. We're all very familiar with Moses' request in Exodus 33, verse 18. He said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And blessed is the man who has such a desire and that makes such a request of the Lord because there is a promise. You remember, those who seek, they shall find. Amen. Even if it was only the very back parts that can be revealed for the time, which is what Moses was able to receive, God will manifest himself to the one who is asking him to do so. Amen. However, there was a time when the knowledge of God was veiled like Moses' face had to be after this encounter with the Lord. In Job 23, verses 8 and 9, he says, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him, and he hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. And I considered what a discouragement that would be. It would almost be a torment for a sensitive heart who desired to see the Lord, who knew he could be known, but he wouldn't be at that time. It would be a great source of discouragement, but we, brethren, don't have to live in such a time. We live in the day of salvation in which the Lord is willing to make himself known and is waiting for such a request to show himself. This day of salvation, our desire is rewarded by the realization of this request. John 16, 25, Jesus says, These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak to you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. There are means which God shows himself to man. Back in Exodus, when he was speaking to Moses, he said, No man can see my face and live. So there has to be a means by which he shows himself to man. He could not appear visually to the physical eyes because of the weakness of the flesh. We would be consumed. But he is showing himself to us in ways in which we can comprehend and in ways in which we can take hold upon him. One of these means is the gospel. Romans 1, 16 through 20 mentions several things about the Lord making himself known through this gospel. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, Amen. for God hath showed it unto them. Now, knowing that this gospel is one of the means by which he makes himself known to us, we have to consider whose gospel it is. Whose gospel is this that makes manifest the Lord? It is Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ. Christ has the preeminence in the means of making the Father known to mankind. Amen. John 14, 8 and 9, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long a time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? Yeah. He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Christ is from the Father, and all things that the Father has are Christ's. So who better to show us of the Father? Christ himself. When someone asks God today, show thyself, I can imagine that the Lord would be this answer. Look at my son and know me by him. That's where I've made the provision to be known. John 1.18 says, no man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, 
he hath declared him unto you. So this is not something that we have to figure out on our own or draw our own conclusions Mm -hmm. from information that we gather because Jesus is making him known. He's declaring him. He is speaking of him, making him clear to us and very evident in his own person. Second Corinthians four, verse six, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Just as the request of Moses was personal, he said, show me thy glory. This revelation is also very personal. He has shined into our heart. Anyone who asks, show me thyself. That's the heart where the Lord is able to deposit this knowledge, the new heart, the new creation. This is the part of us that contains the same nature. So we are well able to comprehend and apprehend the knowledge that he gives us there. So as we open our meeting together tonight, I wanted to have us ask the same thing of the Father. Show us thyself. We have tasted that the Lord is good. We know that his goodness is as a deep well with much more to be opened up to us. By the preaching and the singing and the discussion and even the prayers tonight, the Lord is willing to show us himself. So let us receive the blessing that he will command in our midst, even life forevermore. Amen.